Well, you and I have been working hard here understanding the foundational principles of intermediate system to intermediate system routing, but it is time to get some practice in. Let's jump to the equipment right now and let's configure ISIS between the R1 and R2 routers. Now remember, I have done some work for you here. You can download this CML lab and you can get this all just spun up quickly without having to do any of the base configuration. So let's jump in and let's get just the basic ISIS configured. I thought it would be really important to do this at this juncture, right? We've done a lot of theory, but it is time to see a little bit of the configuration so we know what we're in for. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's not bad at all. You're going to be really, really happy, I believe, with how simple this is going to be to configure. So if you've downloaded the base topology and you're following along, if you do a show IP interface brief, you can see what I've set up. I've just got the gig 0 slash 0, 10, 10, 10, 1 on R1, and that is connected through just an unmanaged switch inside of CML and it leads over to 10.10.10.2 that is over on the R2 device. And then we've got the classic loopbacks set up, loopback zero of quad one and loopback zero of quad two over on the R2 device. And we'd like to get all of those speaking intermediate system to intermediate system. By the way, if you do a show IPv6 interface brief, you'll see that I've also set up a V6 address on each of the R1 and R2 devices. So let's get started. We're gonna go in and we're gonna say router is is, just kidding, I never call it that. We're gonna say router ISIS, and then in router configuration mode, as you recall, it is critical that we put in our network entity title, our NSAP address for this device. So it begins with 49, and then we'll do 0011, and then I'll do my area. Let's just go ahead and do area one. So I'll just do one, 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 one there. By the way, you could have area one is 0001. Doesn't matter as long as we're doing it and applying it consistently. Remember, my big tip here is notepad. Yeah, You know, I'm doing this out of my head right now, but you don't want to do that because you would not want to increase the chance for configuration error. So I would strongly recommend you not do this out of your head, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with these network entity titles that we need for the CLNS uh, protocol. So anyways, net 490011, and then my area ID of the quad one there, and then the system ID. So I'm going to say the quad zeros, the quad zeros, and then we'll just make this system ID of one, if you will. And then we're going to end with that zeros end select value. So there's our network entity title in place. Now, guess what? things get really easy. We're going to go into the appropriate interfaces and we're going to say router. I, uh, it's actually IP router ISIS under those interfaces that we want speaking ISIS. So there you go. Look at how easy that is. Reminiscent of an interface level OSPF configuration. Now, I do want to do this in global configuration mode. I'm going to say IPv6 unicast hyphen routing. So IPv6 unicast hyphen routing. This is going to enable us to do the IPv6 routing with ISIS. So let me go back into the gigabit zero slash zero interface and let me do IPv6 router ISIS. And now we should be routing for the V6 protocol stack as well. Now, if I went too quickly there for you, have no fear because we get to do it all over again on router two. 
And let me say this, I wouldn't start out by jamming in these configurations like you just saw. Of course, I would start out by just doing some basic reachability testing, right? Can these two devices reach each other from an IP perspective? Because if they cannot, we can have the most wonderful ISIS config anyone's ever seen, and it's not gonna do anything for us. So I'm gonna get into the R2 configuration here, and I'm gonna say first, how about IPv6 unicast routing? And then I will do my router, and that is, yeah, router uh, ISIS. Notice it can be tricky when you're trying to figure out, do you need to prefix that IP keyword or that IPv6 keyword in front of router? But we know that's going to be under interfaces. So under here, we're going to set our network entity title. It's going to be 49.0011.com the area identifier, and then we need that unique system identifier. So I'll go ahead and do two here, and then our 00n select value. And now we've got the network entity set, uh, network entity title. So I'll exit, I'll go into our gig zero slash zero, I'll say IP router ISIS, and then I'll say IPv6 router ISIS. And then we will go into the loopback zero and we'll up arrow on the keyboard because we're gonna recall that IP router ISIS command to stick that command under the loopback as well. And now we are ready for our initial verification. So just the initial verification that I wanna walk you through right now in this video is simply gonna be show ISIS neighbors. Isn't it great that we have a show ISIS neighbors command to be consistent with things like OSPF and EIGRP and our other popular scalable interior gateway routing protocols. And we see something very interesting. Notice that the R1 and the R2 device have actually formed two neighborships. There is a neighborship for the level one ISIS, and there's a neighborship for the level two. So we just learned at the command line that we are going to be forming these peerings or these neighborships over both the level one and the level two databases by default. So if we don't specify anything in the config, it does a level one, level two type peering, and there's gonna be a peering for each of those levels between the two devices. We'll be playing with this, of course, in the very next video, so you won't have to wait long to manipulate this, and that's definitely gonna be something that you would want to do. Now, one last verification that we should do is our show IP route, of course, because given our configuration, we should see a level one ISIS entry here for that quad one loopback of our peer R1. And I think if we did everything correctly, we should be able to ping that address. In fact, a better ping would be to ping with a source of our loopback zero. So now we are pinging the loopback of R1, sourcing that traffic from the loopback of R2, and we can see that was successful. So we have achieved full reachability here, utilizing that awesome ISIS protocol as our interior gateway protocol. Now, how about the IPv6? So if I were to do a show IPv6 route, we see, oh yeah, just the local entries there, but there would be a fun way for you to play with this if you so desire. I can go into the loopback zero that we have here on R2, and I could do like IPv6 address and I could do some other address on this device, like I'll do uh, this quick IPv6 address assignment, and then I can do IPv6 router ISIS, 
and we'll end the config. We'll slide back over to the R1 device and we'll do a show IPv6 route. And hopefully we're going to see the ISIS level one entry for that loopback of R2 that we just configured that V6 address. So we can see here that we are successfully routing between these devices with ISIS and it is both level one and level two and we're doing it for IPv4 and IPv6. So once again, we really convince ourselves that we don't need complex topologies. Remember, this switch that I have here is just the unmanaged switch in CML. It's this unmanaged switch right here, which is nice because it doesn't have the routers connected back to back, which is realistic, but it's not adding any overhead to our CML infrastructure here at all. It's just a silly little unmanaged switch that can give us the connectivity between these two routers realistically. So this simple little topology can work wonders for us as we are just starting out with our ISIS configs. You notice how simple this was. The only quote unquote hard part would be the network entity title, but we've shown you just how easy that can be to work with. And you'll be like me soon enough. You'll be entering those right out of your head because you recognize the various hierarchical components of the network entity title and just how easy they are to deal with. So I hope you're excited by this video. And if you thought this was fun, there's way more fun coming up as we delve deeper into the configurations of ISIS, most particularly the tuning and optimization that we can do of these configurations. Thanks so much for watching.